Misha Barishnikov at the top of his form. In the years that Misha's been dancing in the West, he has captured the imagination and admiration of people who had never before been interested in the dance. We'll have the privilege of seeing how he does it. We'll talk to him, we'll, we'll see how he thinks about his dance and how he feels about the direction that his career is taking. And we'll watch him star in a new work, one of the first that he's commissioned as artistic director of the American Ballet Theater. The new work is called Configurations. And it has a special meaning for me because it was created by Chu Song Go, a young choreographer from the Washington Ballet Company where I got my start. When I learn a new dance, I always look forward to that moment when the music finally comes together with the steps. When the music is actually inside my own body and I am within the music itself. The great Irish poet William Butler Yeats said it best, O body swayed to music, O brightening glance, how can we know the dancer from the dance? <laughs> Here's an inside look at ballet, a chance to know the dancer as he becomes the dance. Misha spends hours of every working day drilling himself in the steps and combinations of old and new ballet productions. Like all great dancers, he's perfected his craft. As he arches his back, raises an arm, or stretches a leg, one can see the ideally developed line and extension, the speed and accuracy of his movements. This compulsion to discipline and extend himself was instilled in him by his Soviet teacher, the legendary Alexander Pushkin. I start my training professionally in Riga in Latvia when I was 11 years old. Uh, then, at age of 15, I moved to Leningrad, and I was uh, introduced to this famous man, a magician, uh, Alexander Pushkin. And this man just uh, made me as a dancer. Nothing special was about him. It was a very quiet man. Uh, father figure for us. It was seven or eight students in class. Uh, well, obviously, he was the best teacher in the school, and he had the privilege to select the best material from the, uh, all over the all over the Soviet Union. He was Nureyev's teacher. His students uh, are dancing in every big theater in the world. And I uh, met this man, then here I was, 15 years old. He just looked at me and said, well, let's go downstairs and uh, sort of medical center and uh, see uh, who are you? And just what's, what's, what your legs, arms, and the head about? And just uh, look at me, and uh, I did a few steps, and uh, it was just uh, uh, like um, to selecting a puppy from the litter, you know? Who will crawl away, who will crawl through, who will bark, who will bite. And uh, he looked at me and again and again. So we spent a couple of hours just to look at each other, to talk to each other, you know, in the room like that, you know. And I said, oh, well, I can dance for you. He said, no, 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 I, I, I don't need it. It's just, it's, it's not a point. I said, what's the point? Take me to the class now, for God's sake. <laughs> Inside, I said, I was sweating, I was nervous, because the, um, it was the chance of my life. And um, 
And I said, well, all right. I mean, I think it's a good deal. And then he said to the lady, the school secretary, whatever she was, just, uh, I'd like to have him in my class. And uh, I spent with him three years in the school and three years in the company before he, death, he, he, he died. Misha was accepted into the Leningrad-based Kirov Company in 1967. The company school where Pushkin taught preserved a meticulous classical approach to the dance that dated back to the days of the Tsars. But it was not only ballet skills that Misha learned from Pushkin. Every day, he, he, what, I, what I, I, I think was the most amazing and the most valuable thing, what he teach me, besides all this uh, nonsense about technique and how to dance, to, uh, just to respect to the physical work, like everyday routine, uh, sometimes boring routine, awfully boring and exhausting, because every day you feel different. Some day you have a cold, some day you have sore back, or some day you don't want to do anything, just sleep. Uh, but to go in a class and try to convince yourself you like this job, you like this job, and if you're not taking class or you're not sweating enough, you're not working enough, you start to hate yourself. You start to really feel terrible. It's a kind of guilt trip if you're not, uh, uh, not spend uh, three, four, five hours every day in the studio. And I think that's, that's the secret. He introduced me to the work. That means, he, and, uh, and explain how you have to work. Everything else, easy. How to do double tour. It's not a problem for a, any dancer. It shouldn't be any problem, I would say. I'll put it that way. Uh, but uh, to be a master of your own, it doesn't matter who is coaching you, teaching you, and give you a suggestion, the, the, who is your partner, who is dancers around. You have to be a man of your own mind know what you are doing and why you are doing. And this man, I don't know how, and all his students are a very much their own people. They are strong mentally. The dance is something else. Besides that, he was a genius as just uh, the eye was right on. What's good, what's bad. In 1969, the eyes of the entire dance world were on Misha. At the age of 21, he won the gold medal in the international competition in Moscow. He was a celebrity. but he began to find the Kirov repertoire rigid and restricting. Modern choreographers from the West were out of bounds. Dancers, even the stars, performed infrequently and were given few new parts. They had little chance to extend themselves within the system. In 1961, Rudolf Nureyev had left Russia. In 1970, Natalia Makarova did the same. In 1974, Mikhail Baryshnikov followed their example. While the Kirov company was touring in Canada, he decided to remain in the West. Misha eventually chose to settle in New York. It is just the capital of the dance uh, uh, in this time now, New York, and everything is here. It 
just this amazing city, a thousand choreographers, thousand companies, and millions of people who'd like to see the results. Sometimes they open New York Times, and four or five ballet companies are performing same time. And all companies had their own audience, their own followers, their own favorite critics. Ballet, it's such a word, you know. To be a classical dancer, it is just a part of the be a dancer, dancer's community in New York. It is a half of the city. And uh, Broadway dancers, they are dancers. Uh, a, a jazz ballet, they are dancers. And most of them, they are wonderful dancers. When I'm in the audience on Broadway, I envy these people who is doing the, the uh, West Side Story. I would like to be uh, in, in, to play this part and sing that well and dance that well. And uh, when I am uh, somewhere downtown in an experimental uh, um, dance studio and the, the, somebody are doing experimental work with the clownade and, and singing and dancing, whatever. I would like to be in his place. It's sick. Yeah. I'd like to do everything. But, and, uh, and this country has a lot of opportunities like that. And you have so many chances to um, express yourself. They have no time. That's my biggest problem, uh, time. <laughs>